Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a fabulous day. How are you today? Oh my goodness. All right. So um, I just had a fabulous session uh, with somebody and um, I'm all jazzed up because I, I seriously love working with my students and um, working through some of their projects uh, gets me excited because it's uh, it's actually a really cool way to experience a whole bunch of different projects and you don't have to work on them. You just get to like give advice and critique and off they go, which is fabulous. So thanks so much for joining me today. I wanted to give you a quick tip about uh, how to really start working with the on the things that you really love and getting good at the things that we love. And I'm going to start off uh, by saying that um, this is something that I myself am trying to get better at every single day. So as I learn these things, as I get better at these things, I want to share my lessons with you so that you can also benefit from them, right? Uh, so one of the things that uh, came up for me recently, and uh, this is somebody had a really great story about this, but uh, the idea that, you know, we are uh, at the core, we design what we do and we do what we do because we love to learn, right? And sometimes that actually bites us in the butt. And the reason it bites us in the butt is because we think that we are learning machines and we can learn everything, everything. And therefore on a project, we will try to learn how to be all the people that are needed to be on our projects. So if if you feel like that, give me a heck yeah. Also, I tried to use <laughs> some sort of interactive poll and don't know if that's even here. I'll, I'll launch it here. I'll see if these will work. <laughs> we'll see if anybody answers. All right, so <laughs> just checking. So one of the things that uh, happens when you're uh, working on a, let's say you're launching a scenario project, is there's a ton of different pieces that need to be um, developed. There's the, uh, there's the script. There's the actual writing of the story. There's the refinement of the language. Uh, there's the interactivity. There's the visuals, like a project. Uh, there's narration sometimes. There is the voiceover, right? Uh, there's illustration. So six or seven people, right? And what happens is because we have access to all these learning platforms, we have access to all these tutorials, uh, this, is, this is what we do. We actually were like, oh yeah, I can just learn that. I'll just learn how to cut out people from, uh, you know, from uh, let's say uh, photos that I've taken. I will learn how to code this. I will learn how to use triggers. I will learn how to write scripts. All those things, what they do is they accumulate for you and you actually can fool yourself into thinking that's good enough. Now, here's the challenge that comes up. When you start working on projects and you end up doing all those things, you're not going to be one, really good at all those things. And two, you're probably going to love some of those things more than you love other things. You know what happens, right? Then what happens is you end up working on things that don't give you joy. And then the project drags on. The project doesn't give you as much juice as you want. Because you know if you're working on something that's really within your zone that you really love, those are the things that invigorate you. Those are the things that make you like go and say, I want 10 more projects like this because this was awesome. I loved working on uh, this kind of thing. Or maybe you're like the person who is really great at building rapport with subject matter experts and you can really easily get them to tell you amazing stories and capture that. That's maybe your superpower. So you want to figure out what that is. And um, so you could, let's say, um, go like, let's say you, you are doing the graphic design for yourself. So you could potentially go to lynda.com, learn how to uh, use Photoshop, learn how to use all those uh, tools and create a filter, right? Cut out bodies. Let's say that takes you, for you to get from zero to competent takes you about 30 hours. So that's 30 hours that you spent getting competent. And now what's happened though is uh, that's that you're kind of okay and fooling yourself that you're kind of okay at it, right? And so what happens is you've now invested 30 hours of your time and also now you're you're okay at doing this task. So here's a story I want you to think about. Let's say you bought a house and you didn't even buy a house. You bought a, a plan for a house and you bought a lot of land. And then you basically put it out there and say, hey, who's gonna build this house for me, right? And a contractor raises his hand and he, he gives you a great price. He gives you a great timeline. And you're like, this is awesome. You know, here, this is the house I want. 
you to build. And he might already actually have several kinds of plans built by an architect, and you just get to choose the one that you want. This is basically what happens in those new developments where you get to choose that they have like three or four homes and you get to choose the one you want and you hire your contractor. And sometimes they actually have the contractor already set up and everything. So, so imagine if, as the person who's bought this and engaged with this contractor, you come and every couple of weeks, you go and check in to see how the progress is happening on the building of your house and come by and oh, you see, there he is, there's your contractor and he's digging the hole for your house all by himself. With, or maybe he's digging it with like a, a mini, uh, one of those scooper things that are really fun that I've never, I've never had a chance to write. Uh, and you see him there and you're like, oh, okay, I didn't know he was an expert in foundations, but good for you. It's like, hey, you're a foundation expert too. In addition to being a contractor, it's like, yes, yes, I am. All right, cool. Matt, come back th three weeks later, he's pouring that foundation. You're like, oh, you're, you're also good at pouring the country. He's like, yes, yeah, I'm pretty good at it. Yep. I know how to do that. You're like, okay. Then, you know, then you come by three weeks later, he's, he's putting up the, the frames, the house frames. And then, then he's putting up the electrical as you're checking in. Then he does the plumbing and you're like, at this point, you're probably starting to get worried. Like, there's no way this guy is this good and certified <laughs> to do all these things. Well, the truth is nobody does that, right? No, but no con contractors aren't the experts in development. Contractors are great at managing those projects, being kind of like the strategy person, knowing when things should fall in. They're kind of like basically the project manager, right? And the thing is, we think that because everything's kind of computer based, that all those skill sets are somehow like the same thing, that they're all learnable. But the thing is, is it impacts you negatively. It impacts you psychologically. It impacts you in the wrong way because you, like I said, you end up working on the wrong things. So contractor, what he does is he looks at the job and he says, okay, who do I need that's good at this and can done it, can get it done in the fastest amount of time with the highest amount of quality that I want. And he pulls those people in. And then he can actually have the same couple of people for with different skill sets working on it at the same time, right? So, um, Here's a, whoops, look at this, this is fun. So one of the things that uh, you can do is think about it this way. Uh, let's say you are uh, wanting to do graphic design for you, right? For your projects and you're like, oh, I, I need these uh, creatures created or people cut out or this filter applied. You could spend 30 hours learning how to do Photoshop and then um, realize that let's say you're let's say uh, you uh, value your time at $100 an hour. That means 30 times th times 100. That's $3,000. And you're like, okay, I've invested $3,000 of my time into this skill set that I'm not really gonna like super dive into. But there's people out there, believe me, that have been working in this platform, Photoshop, for probably a decade. Right? I don't know. Probably like they've been there at the beta testing of Photoshop, right? And they're amazing at it. In fact, they're so amazing at it that if you sent them the same job that you're trying to do, it would probably take them like they have all the filters bu built in and the actions. They probably could get the same job that would take you probably another eight to 10 hours to do manually, painfully. It would take them probably five minutes, literally, because they've had 10 years of experience to just be like, boop. Yeah, I know exactly what to do there. Here you go, right? They can take all those files, automate it, done. You, there's, those people actually exist in the world and they actually, you can hire them for very, 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 very little money uh, because they're like, yeah, this is a script. I got it. Yeah, show me your pictures, done. So you can go on a service like Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, find those people. And then the calculation you got to do is if your time is worth 100 bucks an hour and now you're going to uh, say, I'm going to, I could invest 30 hours learning how to do this thing kind of poorly and it'll cost me, let's say 3000 bucks. Is it possible for me to hire somebody for less than $3,000 to do this task for me? Answer is of course, of course, this is what's amazing. Is it going to save you 30 hours of learning plus another 10 hours of pain? That's 40 hours, 40 hours of struggle while you could spend 
I kid you not, just on probably a hundred bucks, under a hundred bucks to get somebody to do this for you. And you'd have it in an hour. Isn't that amazing? So one of the things that I, I can probably hear you thinking saying, my boss doesn't let me do, um, you know, we don't have budget for that. How much time do you have to waste? Is it going to be worth it for you to not have to do this and do something else even better, get good at something, master something, and maybe put out a little bit of money from your own pocket so you got some skin in the game? Heck yeah. Why? Because that's how you get good, right? So you could work on other projects where you're awesome, make that money, and then you spend it on the things that you hate doing so that you actually can get better at the thing that you're doing so that one day you can demand better prices if you want to. But you get to work on more stuff that you love. And then guess what? The people who are doing the stuff that you're hiring out, they, they love that too. That's why they've geeked out on it for the past decade. You get to leverage that. That's amazing. Do it. Do it. So how many of you are uh, doing that right now? So let me know. Uh, I have some kind of odd um, poll here. Maybe it'll work. Either way, uh, if you are using a service uh, that really helps you, and this is for all kinds of stuff not just work stuff, all kinds of things like help around the house, all, you know, people who can leverage that and just focus on their area of awesomeness, really get stuff done. That's how it happens. So um, if you are using a service, like I use Fiverr because it's international and uh, it actually, most people can uh, use it. But if you uh, are using a different service, I'd love for you to share that in the comments so that other people can learn about it. All right. So I hope this was helpful try it out try it out with something small see how awesome it is uh, get over that fear hopefully it helps and um, let me know all right i'll talk to you next time take care friends bye